from the depth instant tutorial cram broadside cannons what makes them different and how to build them there are mainly two ways to make cram broadside cannons the single modular piece and the serial modular piece the single modular piece is just a block like this which you can basically paste into a structure and then you can put them in a row with spacing and armor around each part and you'll have a lot of cram broadside cannons. The other one is the serial modular piece and you can probably see where this is going. This is of course a shape that is meant to connect with many others in a long row of the same exact gun and this will make them more efficient. The single modular piece is uh, the one I do recommend the most. It's very sturdy, it's easy to produce, it's easy to make and it's easy to deploy. The uh, serial modular piece on the other hand is cheaper in terms of materials since the cannon do share a lot of the explosive uh, or other pellets between each other but uh, to use them nicely you have to have them in a row and one of the big drawbacks with using this method is that since they are connected in one big block they are also less resistant to damage. Having a serial modular piece like this requires a real lot of planning. You'll have to have this interconnecting shape like Legos and when you connect it up with the same type of cannon in a row they cannot connect to each other. So basically the contact surfaces cannot be a connecting block. The only functional blocks that are meeting should be autoloaders and pellets. And of course here we have the fusing box that's only connecting to one side so we'll have to be careful about what side we connect it with. Now if you want a more general cram cannon tutorial please check out my cram cannon turret tutorial because in that tutorial I go through crams more generally. This time we will only focus on the cram broadside cannons and what makes them special. So let us build. First we're going to make a little model of the serial cram cannon. Now this is a very small model to show you the principle. It's not very efficient since it's quite small but in terms of efficiency do remember that pellets is the one you have to place very sparingly if you want to get away with a low cost. Autoloaders and uh, six-way connectors, they're very cheap. So if you will spam something, it's them, not the pellets. So here we have this interconnecting shape. I'm sure you can see uh, it's uh, connecting up like a shape that would connect to itself. And as you also probably can see is that this shape we can make longer and longer. And uh, we can make this as long as we want. And uh, we can even store sections of it to be able to kind of adjust how long we would like this to be. So we make it like this, something like that. And as we know, they are not even connected up. So this is an issue. What do we do? Well, we do connect them together. Just like that. And on the end of the blocks, we also connect them together so that if the front connection breaks somehow, they are still connected to each other. Increases survivability quite so much. Then we can add a firing piece. And there we go. Now it's connected up and we'll just add some pellets. And we only need to add pellets on one of the sides. And of course, we can add it on both of the sides, but then we have to think about it every time we connect them up. And of course, this cannon itself will be very weak. It will only be strong in a constellation with cannons that match up. If you're making a set size cram broadsider, you can of course put in some extra payload packers that will not interfere with the other cannon that will spawn uh, just beside it when uh, we made it a prefab thing. And to know what will be connecting up on the other side, well, just look to this side and uh, you'll know, of course. Now, uh, cram cannon broadsiders should have a fairly high gauge because they will hit hard but not very often. 
since the you know since broadsides work the way they do they usually often won't come into contact with the enemy vessels very often so when they do they should fire uh, as powerful shell as possible within reason so usually you would like a cram cannon broadsider that doesn't reload faster than 20 seconds at least because you probably won't get the enemy in your broadside every 20 seconds probably less you can even have it as high as a minute or something like that and when you do connect up an AI to this thing you probably do not need to have a failsafe because the nature of broadside cannons is that it's basically impossible to shoot yourself if you don't have a real funny looking craft of course we have now added a lot of more gauge increasers and we're up to 1600 millimeters and uh, a lot of the time I would max out a millimeter of cram broadsiders because the beautiful thing with broadsiders is when they have a chance to hit they are pretty likely to hit so that's why we can make them so powerful and anyways you can see we connected up here and we do have some stone here as internal armor and I'm trying to make these shapes being able to be interconnectable to each other without actually uh, you know connecting so we can see we have a stone block here and it won't connect up to any of the blocks here which is good now what we want to do is add a fusing box and the uh, fuse I do recommend for broadside is penetration depth since we can make them fairly powerful we can have a penetration depth fuse that explodes within the enemy's armor so set that to something sensible on how powerful you think your cannon will be. We'll check it later, of course. And uh, well, there we go. Now what we need to do is to actually test if it even works. So what you want to do is uh, grab your prefab mood, make a prefab of this and just uh, spawn it beside itself. And like there, we can spawn a couple of more. Fantastic. And now when we spawn them, it looks like they are absolutely fine. But what do you need to do to in order to actually check if they are fine or not? Here and we take this out of play and we take it into play. And when you do this, you can see, oh no, the gauge increasers are connected and that won't work. So we'll have to remove the connection so that they won't line up like this, because if they do, it won't work. A quick tip, I don't know if you knew this, but you can delete huge portions of stuff using the prefab mood. And so we remove the blocks that cause us issues and just replace them with some extra armor. Now it should work fine. The barrel is very simple. You have a couple of motor uh, blocks closest to it so we can armor them a little bit. And then we can have heavy barrels or normal barrels. If you need to, you will add recoil suppression barrels. Um, you can add flash suppression barrels for stealth. But um, other than that, this is the only like mixture we should have. We can of course have uh, something like heavy barrels uh, for more survivability or just because it looks cooler, which is pretty true. We can also protect the motor barrel block by just having some metal beams covering it up basically. So you'll have to think about the uh, pattern and how it will interconnect and here we go. Pretty decent protection. All right, let's spawn a couple of them and just test them out a little bit and see if uh, they work this time. So they seem to be connected up and they seem to be working absolutely fine. So to make sure that they are, we'll do like this. And you can see they are still connected individually and they have the same gauge so that's beautiful so uh, now if you look at this one it has a 34 pellets connected and if you look at this one it has 64 that is because well it shares the one from this one beautiful so for the end piece we can add pellets here manually to make it be as powerful as the other ones but that will make it less efficient of course let us just test fire this thing. Magnificent. And uh, you can of course uh, set them up to synchronization if you don't want them to fire all at once. But in any case, a good shell for this, well, we need to reconfigure loadout. 
So, what do we do? Well, basically, we want to make it far slower. So, uh, now it's 14 seconds. But if we set this to more uh, payload compactors, it will be 23 seconds. So we can have a lot of payload uh, compactor weight to make uh, it uh, fire slower and also fire a more powerful shell. If we add this payload compactor weight that looks like the ammo boxes here, it will make uh, it take longer time to fill the cram shell because the cram shell will basically be more compact or more powerful. Let's go and max the hardener pellet weight out and add a little bit of high explosive. And just apply to all cannons and maybe a little bit more. So 42 seconds. Of reload speed and we should have a pretty powerful shell. And remember this shell on this side is not as powerful as the other four. Actually it's half as powerful. And we now have waited and let's fire. And there we go. Some quite powerful explosions inside of this armor. We got through two layers of metal and the applique panel and we kind of exploded here inside. And with the penetration depth fuse you can instead have frag pellets inside of it and have a wider fragmentation angle. There we go. And there we can see it got straight through to the heavy armor. Uh, it just stopped on the heavy armor. And if you fire another volley, we'll get through the heavy armor as well. But do keep in mind that this armor slab is huge and that these particular broadside cannons are uh, not huge. So when we're happy with the loadout of this thing, we should of course save one of the modules as a prefab and you will need to isolate the module to do that. And of course you can make the barrel longer if you want to. It's, uh, it's up to your personal preference. It's, um, if you have a longer barrel, uh, it will of course be more accurate, but maybe a little bit slower in turning around. Uh, when making a prefab, do however make sure that you get all the pieces down there. So here we have it, my prefab, and I will save this one. There we go, nice and saved. And well, now we can just enjoy using them. So uh, let us just basically show you and just quickly building a big flat single module. So uh, basically we make a framework here, make sure it's connected like from all sides so that it uh, you know, won't break even though ma many of the connections break, it's you know, still somewhat functional. And then we'll need, just need to find a way to connect up as many uh, payload compactors to uh, pellets as possible. And this will not be designed in order to connect up with anything else. So you don't have to think about that. All right, I think we find a great way to have as many connections to as many pellets as possible. So let's connect that up. All right, that's pretty nice. Now we can fill in some spaces with uh, gauge increasers. And the beautiful thing about this design, now this is kind of flat, whoops. So uh, I do not want to waste one layer to just uh, secure connecting them up in the back here. Now this will be a weakness that could, you know, that uh, it would have been good if we connected them up, but I want to be able to prolong or basically make this shorter uh, at my whim, like that. And we'll have a penetration depth. I hope this will penetrate a little deeper. So maybe set it to, and we'll just add these until we're a bit over 2000. So when we have a couple of extra, some of these can get shot off while we still have a decent caliber. Right, so just slap some armor on there. And since this is a larger cannon, we should invest in some heavy armor just around the kind of firing piece. Probably smart. And there we go, as all things should be, a nice combination of function and form. And we now set up a nice mix of high explosive, frag, hardener, and of course, payload compactors to make it fire only twice per minute. So here we go, something quite decent. And we should probably set in and set the frag level to... If we set it to very low, we can actually make it penetrate a little bit more than it would have otherwise. And if we say it to 180, we can make it destroy more things inside. So let's try both. 
So with 180 degrees we got a detonation here inside and it would of course have destroyed a lot of squishy blocks. And you can probably see that it did penetrate the uh, heavy armor on one shot. Very nice. Let's set the cram to like 13 degrees and we'll fire again. And there you can see the cram shells uh, went kind of through and the frag did the rest. So that's uh, different types of setups you can have. Well, I hope this tutorial answered everything you ever wanted to know about cram broadside cannons. So, see you next time. Jim Edison, signing out.